Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, in today's uh, talk, I want to go, uh, you know, another uh, piece of the project that we're working on. This one is an extremely important part of the project, which is the business viability analysis. And uh, please uh, take the moment to call up the slides for the business viability analysis. It's really important. It's in your book, of course. But please uh, pull that up and we'll go over that because this will form a really key component of your uh, final project. Because it's, the, the point is, like I said in the last lecture, we're not going to develop an entire strategic plan for a new business. There isn't really the time for that in this class. But however, getting to this point where you decide whether your business is viable or not is really a, a huge step forward in, your, in, in, in uh, any kind of creation of a new business or, or following through on an idea. Once you get to the point where there, if you determine whether a business is viable, the rest starts flowing more naturally. One of the biggest problems that uh, people will tell you when they do anything to start a new business, new business line, whether it's for entrepreneurship or a startup, small business or something very large, is that it's difficult to know whether the business will work or there's a, a, a good chance that it will work. So this uh, talk and this tool that you will see uh, really will help you uh, know whether something has an at least intrinsic uh, uh, cap capacity to be uh, viable. And I suggest you keep this with you your whole career because it, it, you'll always be presented with things like, you know, let's do this. Your, your boss might say, I really would like to pursue this. Or what do you think about this? And this provides you with a way to determine whether or not that business has the, the viability to go forward. I'm not saying it's going to 100% work for sure, but at least it will tell you that this business has the basics for viability. Then you have to do what you have to implement and do the right thing. But a lot of times uh, you'll be able to count out business and, and go away from things that are not going to work, which will save you a tremendous amount of uh, time and, and cost and heartbreak. So let's look at this. First, a quick thing. This isn't exactly related to the international entrepreneurship, but in general, reasons uh, businesses fail, if you look on that slide too there, is, um, you know, they've, and these are the top 20 reasons that people say why do businesses fail, and it's, it's really uh, based on there's no need for the product or service, lack of cash flow, the wrong team, competition, all the things you see there. A lot of reasons. The biggest one being a perceived that there, people didn't really need what you were trying to sell or they didn't want what you're trying to sell or they didn't understand what you're trying to sell. And then there's a lack of cash flow. You put those two things together, a lack of finance, of funding, and, and a mismatch of what you're trying to sell and what the people want. And you have most of the reasons why businesses fail. Um, so that, that really captures that. Then you have the wrong team, etc., all those other things. But if you look at the top two or three, you get a really good idea what you need to try to avoid when you try to do a new business venture, or either onshore, offshore, or a new business line, or a tweak, or startup, or, or modification, innovation to anything that you are currently doing. Uh, when you look at the principle of strategy, again, this comes from your book, is that you know one of the most important things uh, about strategy formation is uh, you have to figure out what can my company do best. Where can we be significant? Where can we be first? Where can we be relevant? It's, in business in general, there's really no point in trying to be number 10. You know, it doesn't help to be, we want to be a marginal player in an unimportant industry. You want to really try to do something that's huge and sweeping, you know, like uh, take over the world or conquer this. But, but it, it really, you want to do something that's meaningful, viable, and significant because that's what will give you the impetus and the push to get it done. And also, if you get it done, you know, sometimes a lot of good ideas get to a point where you could do that, but what would be the result? It's not worth doing. So you really want to try to spend your life, your career, doing things that are important, significant, interesting, and have an impact. And then the next thing is, am I willing to uh, commit to the uh, business with passion, product, service, resources, and funding? And we'll cover that a bit more. But basically, that's saying, you know, you, are you, even though you identify that, that it's a good idea, is your, is your company willing to stand behind? Are they willing to go all the way through? Are they fully committed? Is there a passion for it? Is it part of their DNA? Is this what the company does? Is there track record? Is there history? Are you going to be uh, supported or left out hanging to dry on something that you're, you're innovating in a different country? And also, you have the resource and the funding. If, if, if you're uh, charged with starting something or you decided to do something in another country and you're out there and you just don't have the resources or, or the funding you thought was going to be available it gets pulled, uh, it'll really affect your business. So this is really important to figure out is, is, is the commitment there, all the way from idea, passion, track record, and the resources and funding. And then do I understand 
and, uh, and have the ability to turn on the drivers of the business. Remember, drivers of a business are things you click a switch here and something happens here. Uh, so that you have to understand all business is really predicated on you knowing what levers to pull to make the output that you desire. What can you do here to make a certain thing happen? How much can you, you know, if you fund this, push this, have this location, lower this price, raise this price, cut this cost, increase this cost, whatever it is um, that makes the business happen. And that's, you have to know that uh, otherwise, you're, you'll be uh, kind of lost in, a, in, a, in, in different efforts that don't really bear fruit. It's really important for you to understand your business well enough to know what the drivers are. Okay, you look at the next um, slide there, slide four. And these are the kind of things you look at when you look at proof of commitment. Now remember these and use these because this is part of your, your, your uh, new business project. You're, you're going to do a business viability analysis. And when you're doing this part, now this is not, I mean, it looks kind of easy, and maybe it looks kind of difficult, it's harder than it looks. I have to admit, it's harder than it looks because it's hard for us to think about things in these silos. But I think if you practice this, think about it, look at this and understand and use these categories. I'm, I put them there for your help, you know? So you can really see uh, what, what does it mean to say that, what does it mean to say proof of commitment? Well, here's some ideas. Um, what's the, you know, if, you, if you're thinking of a business, you're, you're, you're doing, um, you're selling uh, basketballs or something uh, to France and you think, okay, do we sell basketballs in the States? Do we have a track record for selling basketballs in other countries? That's your track record. Uh, what is it? Do you have it all? Is it all ready to go? Can you do it? Do you, ha do you have the education and training to do it? The affinities that do you like basketball? Do you love basketball? Do you want all that sort of thing? You know, I don't want to keep on going with basketball, but yeah, I get the idea that you need to have, have a proof that this is what you do, proof of that you can do it. When you're looking at, uh, on, on this section of proof of commitment, it's more like, why you? Why do you think, or why does your company think that you can do this, that they can do this, that we can do this? That's where you find your commitment. Now, well, we can do it because we have the funding. We can do it because we love it. We can do it because we have the passion. We can do it because we have a track record. We can do it because we have connections, capacity. We have the relevance. We have the locations. Whatever it means that you, why you, why can your company be successful doing this? Those are the things we're looking for in the proof of commitment, resource, and passion for the business. You may have a, it might be a really good idea, but your business, your company doesn't like to do it. It may be great, but you don't want to do it. If you don't want to do it and, and really uh, expend the effort, it's not going to work. So you look at all these things, language ability, special interest. Uh, some countries that English is fine, uh, many, many uh, countries it's not. If you don't have someone who speaks the right language, there for the right, you might really be limiting who you can talk to on the other side, uh, what kind of support you can get. Unique talents, abilities, their origin. Of course, in some countries, being from the U.S. is going to be a plus. In some countries, being from the U.S. is going to be a negative. It depends on what you're selling and what you're trying to, how you're positioning yourself. If you're in a high risk, a very volatile place, and you're in the banking sector, uh, being an American bank may be, uh, or a financial provider may be very positive. If you're something like if you're trying to sell perfume to France and you're uh, from the U.S., you know, you're going against their strength. So it probably wouldn't be looked as favorably. So you, you have these kind of things that matter, you know, your country of origin, et cetera. The family history background of your company, of you, et cetera, who you're dealing with, social network, your work habits, your personal habits, all ethics, and all these things are go into factoring if you are, uh, have a commitment to this business. Take a minute to think about those. And then, of course, when you, you're going to do three sets of slides, first slide, second slide, and third, final, I'll, re I'll respond to each one. I, I, it's not going to be as easy as it looks. Sometimes people get them a little bit mixed, and other times it's just not as complete. But just really think about these and say, think about how can I prove that I'm my business is the, is committed to this and 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 the ways you're looking at there from the various and you might, and of course there are many more than these are just some examples depending on what your business you're choosing. Now the key proof of commitment is is the financial strength, and remember. Um, just as a quick comment, uh, you, sometimes you can get funding, your own company has the resources, other times you think, well, we'll get financing from a bank. And, we'll, and some banks will finance, if, you're, if they're really strong with you here, they'll help finance uh, overseas ventures as well. And other times, um, you get local banks to finance you, but of course you don't have much track record there, but maybe based on, on guarantees or support, et cetera, from the head office, they may be willing to do some forms of financing. You never know. There are all sorts of government-sponsored programs, like say you're uh, developing a new a business in Norway that's going to export Norwegian products out. The Nor the, you'll find support there. That that government is very amenable to supporting uh, companies that export 
the, the goods and services from Norway. So you, if you, it depends on where you're going and what you're doing, and you may be able to find different pools of financing. The non-government organization, the NGOs, uh, if you're doing charitable work, you're doing something that uh, mass housing or um, something that's that's a, a societal benefit, you may find there are a lot of sources of funding for those efforts. And so usually you can find those things. But those are kind of ideas. You think about how am I going to fund this? A lot of times you'll be financing it from your own company's resources and you'll step out that way or or getting a, uh, borrowing money based on your home country, your home uh, country's relationship with, with you know, banks, etc., with, with your company. Then the next thing is your uh, of, of the drivers. Um, now these are, uh, you know, once you start saying they sound more obvious, but if you're thinking about a restaurant business, it's location, if, if you say, almost, there's always a price driver, of course if it's low, if people, you know, it depends on where the price is. Sometimes if you charge too little, it, it doesn't have the same cachet as something priced more. Uh, so it can be a number of different things, but price is always going to be a driver. At one point, location is always going to be a driver. Product type, quality, credibility. You know, quality can be a driver, sometimes other times it's not important. Uh, and all these kind of things. So these are the kind of things you're going to look at. And you might think, you know, how, how do I know what the drivers are? We well, have to research because uh, this is where the research is important. If you either have your own track record, your own history of knowing because if you're in that business or you have to develop the knowledge, you cannot go forward in a business if you don't understand the drivers and what makes it work. It's just not responsible and it won't work. Take whatever amount of time it takes to understand the drivers of your business and make sure you know them. So you know that if if I raise my price by X, I'm going to slice off part of this market. If I drive, if I push down the price, if I can only have my cost of um, resources lowered by 10%, I can lower my product cost by 10% and that will give me X amount of new customers. You have to know those kind of things. Um, the visibility market, sometimes you know you think, well, I, a big driver is my online presence. A big a big driver is my my uh, my you know billboard advertising. My big driver is is how I can get third party referrals. If I can get those, I can the a big a driver is the government resource, the government support, tax advantages, access to um, you know re resources, materials, labor, educated labor, low cost labor, all all sorts of things. Maybe seasonality is a, see, there's always a seasonality component in almost any business, oddly enough. But it generally things kind of follow a, a trend for whatever reason. Obviously, agriculture makes a lot of sense, but sometimes you'll find real estate has a has a has that. Uh, people don't like to sell their house around Thanksgiving. They don't like to sell their houses around Christmas. So they, it's less of a market. So you, everything has a seasonality, and your business may be heavily based on seasonality, depending on what you what you want to sell. Current trends, economy ups and downs, etc. All these things go in. There are more, but at least these uh, make sure you consider in your business, uh, in your project, how do these, are these drivers for the business I'm talking about and, and will, they, uh, will they affect uh, what I'm doing and how do I know how to manipulate them? Okay, now I'm going to show you the quick thing. This on slide, what is that, uh, eight, um, this is the tool you're going to use. This is, it, it, I put it in a simple way, you have your idea for your business on the left hand side and then your proof of commitment. Uh, your passion, etc., the drivers, and any other additional comments you have. So this is a table you can use. I suggest you use this your whole career. It works extremely well with any time they're trying a new business initiative. And also, like when I'm a, I, I, I work as a consultant to companies that they tell me I want to do something new, I always put it in this format. Let me hear your new idea, and then I ask them, how, how, what's your commitment to this? How much funding are you going to get? What makes you think you can do it? Where's your track record? Have you done this before? And, and you fill out all that. And then I, I test, do you understand the drive? Often they don't, so I help them in that way. I find I help them with an awareness and knowledge of what really drives the business in their market they're looking at. So, and you put all that together and you really come to the point early on and say, you know what, y'all shouldn't do this because you don't have the commitment or you don't understand the drivers. You, you think you want to do this because it's a good idea, but the, your, your head office is not behind it. You're not going to get the funding for it. You're not going to get the support. You won't get, like sometimes you'll say, we need to do this and we need this change in our credit philosophy. What if they're not going to get that change in their credit philosophy? The whole business is predicated on that and you can't go anywhere. And then the drivers, etc. So you'll, you'll, um, I always use this when I deal with companies whenever they talk about something new and it really focuses their attention on what is important to determine whether the business idea is even viable to begin with. Once you get this far, like I said before, once you become to get it viable, then the rest starts falling into place. Okay, so here's a little, I'll walk you through this a bit. Here's where you write in uh, slide nine, you write your business idea, title, uh, your company name, etc. And then you go on 
uh, and here's how it looks. You, you just uh, put in there uh, what is the past history on this, what's the track record, and in a bullet point form. You can expand on this later in a written form, but basically for our purposes, we're going to do a PowerPoint for your final project. Put this in. What's the f what are these kind of things? Where is the Finney? What kind of family history does this company have? What did the work have? What are all those sorts of things? And you list those in the proof of commitment, etc. Same thing for the drivers. You take those things you see there and you uh, adjust them to the project you are doing. So what's the price point? What do you think it should be? What is it? How, if, if you say my price you know, it's 100 bucks, okay, so is that low, high, uh, half, double, what is it? If you're, uh, private, if you're selling private uh, school education in a foreign country, American style education country, what does that, how does that compare to the existing foreign schools? How does that uh, compare to the existing parochial school? How does that compare to the existing public education and, and in terms of quality, of course, low cost, etc.? So those are the kind of things you have to figure out uh, if, if I put this price here, what, how, how do I know that, what, in, it's a driver in, what, in relation to what? So that kind of thing. So you see all those things there. And really, this should help you a lot because this tells you what you should be looking at and, and gives you an idea. Because from my experience, from the you know, years of doing this kind of work, these are the kind of things that, go in, that are drivers for businesses. They're going to be different for your business, different for all businesses, but it's these types of things. And, it, and, and it's a great start on how, how you do the driver. And of course, as the commitment this from years of experience of doing this kind of work where you really see these are the things that can prove and show whether a company is committed and these are the kind of things that can show whether the company understands and is able to manipulate and push the drivers okay then you can if sometimes you, you might want an extra comment like I've got great uh, family connection you put oh by the way I know the president of this country I, or whatever happens to be you can expand on if you need to there yeah, you usually don't need to do too much on that so that's what your your table looks like at 13 on page on slide 13, kind of when it's finished, and uh, and that's it. So so for this part of your of your project, which is a hugely important part of your project, this is a business viability assessment. You see it as one of the slides. This is how you develop it, and once you get to this point, you're really uh, got something important, and you have something you have confidence in that your business can go forward with at least a high potential for, for success. It may not be successful based on your failure to implement, but it's, it, going, it, can, it will be successful if all these things are true. You always have to be honest to yourself whenever you do something like this. And then you follow through with the hard work necessary. Okay, well, I hope that helps. And uh, I think you a big, big plus. And it'll be very interesting for you to work on that for your project. And I hope you can see the applicability for whatever you do in the future involving a new business, new initiative, etc. All right, thanks.